pyjamas, the calendar says it is December 1st and that can mean only one thing, Vlogmas is officially here, back again for 2023, but more importantly than that, December 1st means it is finally time to open the first door of this year's tea advent calendar and let me tell you I have been excited about this since December 24th last year when I opened the last door of my previous calendar. Tea calendar is genuinely the highlight of my year because it just brings me so much joy as a tea lover to have a brand new flavour to try every single day. I just absolutely love it. Now this year I've gone for a calendar that I've never had before. I've chosen a calendar from a brand called yawn they do tea coffee and hot chocolate advent calendars and of course i have gone for the tea version now for the last two years i have used the bird and blend advent calendars bird and blend is one of my favorite tea companies of all time i absolutely love them the first year i got their calendar it was genuinely my favourite thing ever. The second year, it was just as good, but some of the flavours were repeated, so I felt like the surprise element, which is really my favourite part about opening the tea advent calendar, just wasn't quite there as much. So this year, I've gone for something new and I'm hoping it will be delicious. So without further ado, let's kick off Vlogmas and December with the first door of the advent calendar, which is right up here in the top corner. Can I get it out? Okay, what does it say? Number one, does it actually tell me what it is? Let's find out. Okay. Okay, it doesn't say what it is. What does it smell like? Oh, that smells delicious. It smells very vanilla-y. Right, I'm gonna see if there's instructions on the back. Okay. Ah, okay, so basically they're in all on the back and then you turn it upside down to see what the flavour is. So this one's ingredients are black tea, sunflower, jasmine petals, natural flavours and real maple syrup. And the flavour is <gasps> pancake stack. That sounds incredible. And I guess that must be like the what I was taking for vanilla must be maple flavour. So without further ado, I'm gonna pop the kettle on and we are gonna try pancake stack tea, which in my opinion sounds like an ideal way to start December. I really do feel like maple syrup is one of my favourite things ever. It smells incredible and it tastes even better. So really, what more could you ask for? I'm hoping this tea will be a reflection of that fact because it does smell amazing. And all that I've got left to do now is taste it. I've tried to be very, very patient with this tea making process because I usually make the fatal mistake of just rushing things and then the tea smells good, but the flavour just always falls short. So I've really left it to brew. The tea bag is still in there, which I never normally do, but I really wanted to give it a chance to let the flavour flavours shine and I also went and sat with the kittens for a while so that the tea could brew and I wouldn't be just impatiently waiting to try it but now I think I've left it for more than enough time so without further ado the first cheers of vlogmas let's give this a try mm. I really do feel like a vanilla-y flavour comes through, even though that wasn't in the ingredient list. I feel like that just might be the complexity of the maple flavour. But I feel like this is giving me a reminder of, I think it's called Melbourne Breakfast, which is basically an English breakfast tea with vanilla in. So it does just taste like a comforting, classic cup of tea, but with an extra level of like sweetness sort of mixed into the 
into the vibe so that you get an extra like little something from it so it just feels like an English breakfast tea elevated I'm not sure I would say it tastes like pancakes but I feel like the reason they called it pancake stack was just for the maple flavor really more than anything and that definitely comes through as a lovely like delicate sweetness that just elevates the flavor of the tea so I'm considering this a vlogmas a day one success and I can't wait to see what the rest of the doors hold I'm hoping this will just be the start of something very very delicious just spent part of my lunch break making a start on my reread of Little Women which has just put me in such a lovely festive mood. For anyone that doesn't know I am hosting a read along of Little Women this December leading right up to Christmas Eve when we'll finish the final chapter so if you're interested in joining either for reading the book for the first time ever highly recommend or like me you want to reread then definitely do join. I just think this is the perfect book for this time of year because it is so cozy and wholesome and heartwarming that it feels festive Festive, although it's not like a Christmas book as such. It starts with chapters that take place at Christmas time but aside from that it is a book that could be read at any time of year but I just think the themes and the overall vibe that this book gives off just make it perfect for this time of year. So I started a little bit of reading at lunchtime. I only read one and a bit chapters so very much still at the start where it was just introducing the sisters and their family and the dynamic that they're living in but I just love this book so much so I'm very very happy to have made a start on this reread. Reading updates aside, I also thought now would be a good time for a kitten update. Today is actually quite a bittersweet day because although it's the start of Christmas time and start of December, which I am so excited for, it is also the final day that we're going to have all four of the kittens here with us. Yesterday on the 30th, they went to get neutered, which all went very smoothly, which I was very glad of. But that of course means that they are now old enough and big enough and ready to go and get adopted. So, big updates to share. First things first, this little fella, who is called Raymond, is actually gonna be staying here forever. So we're keeping Raymond and he is just so cute. I mean, they're all so cute. I just wanna preface this by saying that if I could have kept all four kittens, I absolutely would have done. But obviously there is a cost to adopting kittens. First of all, just like straight up, you pay the rescue to adopt them. And that obviously goes towards the cost of neuter neutering the kittens, vaccinating them, and also just goes back into the rescue so that they can help more and more cats. So even though I've fostered, I still have to pay the adoption fee so that's the first cost and then of course you've got to think about the cost of keeping a cat for its whole life and making sure that you're able to provide for them by all of their food and any potential like vet bills and things like that so in the end as much as I would absolutely have loved to keep them that would obviously mean that we would have five cats altogether and I just feel like that is not a uh, financial commitment I'm able to make so heartbroken because I really am devastated about having to take any of them back but I know that they'll be getting adopted by wonderful people. So Raymond is staying here um, and then little Dutch here is actually being adopted by Jay's mum. So he's going to be staying in the family as well, but obviously not in this house. Then we have gorgeous little Sherman, who we call Sherm the Worm. 
he is going to be going to get adopted and so is my tiny little baby Gilbert who is just so cute and also I like to call him Gilbert Mouse because his face reminds me of Stuart Little so tomorrow is the day that we have to go back to the rescue all four of them are going back with us because they get a final health check done at the rescue center then i'll be bringing raymond back here dutch will be going off to jay's parents house and then sherman and gilbert have both already been reserved so they'll be going off to their new homes as well so very bittersweet i know this is what fostering is all about and the whole point is that you take care of them and get them ready to go and get adopted and honestly whoever gets Sherman and Gilbert are going to be the luckiest cat owners ever because these boys are all so so lovely but I'm trying to soak it all in today and enjoy the chaos of having four kittens running around because I have loved the last three weeks I think it's been three weeks now the last three weeks of kitten time so much it's been wonderful and another reason we couldn't keep more than one of the kittens is because we wanted to make sure we still had like room and the capacity to take on more foster kittens in future and help even more cats because obviously that is a really lovely thing to do and something we definitely hope to be able to do as well in the future. So first go at fostering. I'm considering a success although technically you could consider Raymond to be a foster fail because he is staying here but on the whole I'm feeling successful because I've had a wonderful time with all these kittens and I think that we've done a great job of getting them ready to go to their forever homes. So, kitten update there. I did want to ask a question. So obviously, we named these kittens and I named Gilbert and Raymond and then Jay named Dutch and Sherman. Now Jay does not like the name Raymond, so he told me that I have to change it. Now I like Raymond and I think it's a cute name, we call him Little Ray, but I wanted to get opinions. Is Raymond a good name for this kitten? Do you have any other suggestions? Because if you do, drop them in the comments down below. The main thing for me is that I don't like to give cats or any animal really, um, like names that are not real names. I like them to have proper names. So obviously we've got Oscar and Raymond, but I'm interested to hear if anyone has any thoughts. Should I keep the name Raymond? I'm leaning towards yes, but I'm also open to suggestions. So yeah, give me your thoughts in the comments down below. Right now, I'm going back for the afternoon of work at my desk and then after work, I'm actually running to the garden center to go meet Jay who is driving there after work and we're gonna get our Christmas tree and then drive back together. So very excited about that. And we'll be decorating the tree tonight, which I cannot wait for. morning that I actually don't think I can wait any longer to try this second day of tea partially because I just need to warm myself up with a hot drink and partially because if I do wait any longer I think that the drink is going to have gone cold so day two of my advent calendar is a flavour that I'm very excited about because it is toffee apple now I don't often go for fruity flavours of tea but when I do I feel like ones that are more of a cosy version of a fruit tea something like a toffee apple or like a cinnamon apple vibe that isn't just like pure summery fruity but actually brings a fruity tea into the cozy season a little bit more is kind of more up my alley so I'm excited about this one and it smells really really delicious it's got like such a nice caramelly scent to it not very appley actually but 
as I said, I'm not really a fruity person, so that is not a bad thing for me. So without further ado, let's try tea number two. Oh, I take everything back. Actually, the apple flavour, although it doesn't smell appley, the apple is like the first thing you taste, and it kind of reminds me of like, oh my god, that's really nice. Basically like the apple of an apple pie. So like nice and like a stewed apple, warming, cozy vibe. So it doesn't have like a crisp, fresh, juicy apple flavor, but it definitely has like a really nice, noticeably apple flavor, but kind of like blended with the toffee to make it just seem really cozy. Wow, that's actually really lovely. Big, big fan of that one. So welcome to December 2nd, second day of Vlogmas and the second day of the Tea Advent calendar. I did do a little bit more reading of Little Women yesterday evening and I've now read three chapters. We've just been introduced to Laurie and I absolutely love Laurie as a character and also just like his interaction with all of the sisters over the years. But I feel like the way that he and Joe kind of officially meet although they've kind of like met in passing before they kind of like kick off this friendship and you can see like why they end up being such good friends for so many years because they are just like very similar people and I enjoy seeing that like kick off. I feel like the sister that I always struggle to warm to most and it's not that I don't like her but is Meg. I don't know why exactly but I just feel like there are so many bits where you can tell that she's well meaning but she does kind of just seem a bit like a party pooper and she's so like conscious of I guess like what people think of them that she kind of doesn't allow herself to have a good time which I feel like is probably something that I should feel more sympathetic about but at the very beginning of the book I don't really like warm to her as much although I do like her a little bit more later on so those are my thoughts thus far on Little Women we'll definitely be doing some more reading later on but today as I've mentioned is the very sad day that we have to take all of the kittens back to the rescue centre obviously Sherman and Gilbert will be staying there ready to get picked up by their new owner um, and then obviously Dutch and Raymond will be coming back with me and Jay's mum so exciting day in that respect but also a sad day to be saying goodbye to two of the kittens so this morning we're pretty much just staying at home I'm going to just spend some quality time with all of them still together so that's the plan for this morning and I'll catch up with you later on. <laughs> to you guys today has actually been really really hard I kind of knew it would be going into this whole experience when I signed up to be a foster carer I knew that I was going to find the return date really difficult because I am just such an emotional person when it comes to animals specifically I'm actually not that emotional in everyday life but when it comes to animals I just find myself getting like overly invested in them so quickly and like attached to animals when I've not even met them like when I hear about animals on TikTok or just like read about them I get so attached and so emotional about animals I've never even met so I knew obviously going into fostering kittens that I was definitely going to get a real bond with them and then really struggle to take them back but obviously that is kind of the purpose of foster care and obviously that day came today and it was just as hard as I expected it just feels so strange to take these little don't cry you're such an idiot I did this when I was at the center as well I was like you're just being silly but I just cannot seem to stop myself from crying about this but anyway it just seems so strange to take these little animals that you've grown to care about so much <laughs> and just leave them it just seems so weird but obviously they are going off to good homes which is the main thing but it is just so hard so I definitely went with the intention of like do not cry don't make a fool of yourself in front of the people that work there and I cried literally like three times while we were there and then on the way home as well so that's just who I am <laughs> it's funny but it's not at the same time so anyway emotional day but 
a good one nonetheless because obviously that means that Raymond is now in his forever home even though it's where he has been for the last few weeks. Dutch has gone off to his forever home and then Gilbert and Sherman are going to be going to their forever homes I think tomorrow so they've both been reserved and are going to be getting adopted as well so it's a good thing and everyone is going off to a happy place but it is just sad to separate out the family so ah, crying again. <laughs> I'm ridiculous, I know that, so please don't worry if you're judging me and thinking that I'd be ridiculous, I'm judging myself as well, but there's just nothing I can do about it, it's just who I am. So there we go. Today was hard, but obviously good, and I am actually, as much as my tears might suggest otherwise, really excited to foster cats and kittens again because it's so nice to know, obviously as an animal lover, that I'm in a position to be able to help an animal in need. So. The next step for us anyway is obviously now that we have little Raymond permanently living in this house the process is going to be that we have to integrate him in with Oscar and get them settled and happy living in harmony with each other. Worst case scenario we need to get to a position where they can tolerate each other and best case scenario we're hoping to get to a situation where they actually like each other. So that is going to be the next few weeks of just like slowly integrating them, introducing them to each other and just like gradually getting them used to being in the same space a little bit more and hopefully just getting more and more happy to be together and then once they are both completely settled that's when we'll be in a position to look at getting some more foster animals whenever some come up in need but for now we're just focusing on the two that we do have and getting them integrated before we add any more little cats into the mix but I do feel like now that I've done my first like foster kitten experience even though separating them and taking them back at the end was really really hard and I also did foster fail Raymond so I didn't even complete the process entirely I do feel like I now feel like it'll be easier next time because I've done it once and I feel like the first time is always harder. So Raymond doesn't seem to be doing okay on his own. I feel like he's probably just going to be a little bit lonely because he doesn't have any brothers to roll around with and play with. But this evening we're just going to have a cosy night in, get the fire on and take Raymond downstairs so that he can just chill with us so that even though he doesn't have his brothers he hopefully won't be too lonely. So that's the plan. Um, We've done it, officially fostered our first set of kittens and now we are officially owners of two permanent forever cats which I am very happy about. I'm currently awake at what I would describe as an un fathomably early hour for a Sunday morning. It's like 7am right now and I'm ready to leave the house which means that right now I'm actually just drinking a quick coffee and I'm saving my tea advent calendar for a little bit later because in my opinion tea and especially tea that comes from a special advent calendar is there to be savoured and not just drunk down as quickly as possible which is what I'm doing with this coffee but the reason I'm up so early is because I'm booked onto a box and run class this morning. Myself and my sister have decided recently to sign up to a new studio and try out a few of their classes. So we've already been to a yoga class, we wanted to try out one of their boxing classes and also some spins. So today we're doing the box and run class which is probably the scariest one because I have the least idea of like what to expect. So running I'm pretty confident with but boxing I am not. I'm not very coordinated so I feel like that could be a bit of a left hook to me if you get what I mean. So um, that should be fun though. I'm excited but I have to set off exceedingly early. The class isn't until nine but I need to go and pick a tane up first and I'm having to set off quite early because we've woken up this morning to what could only be described as a winter Wonderland. I'm genuinely so excited because I had no idea we were expecting snow this week at all so it wasn't on my radar. Jay woke up to feed Oscar this morning um, at like 5am because he was ready and awake for his food um, and looked out the window and it was snowing so really beautiful but obviously that means I want to set off a little bit extra time so that I can sort of account for the fact that I'll probably be driving a bit slower and that roads may be a bit busier. So up early, caffeinated and ready to go out for the spin class. Unfortunately because I desperately want to show you how beautiful it looks outside. It's actually still early enough that the sun hasn't risen yet so I can't actually show you anything because much as I've tried my camera is just not able to pick up the beautiful sights so you'll have to stay tuned and see that in a little bit once the sun has come up. 
but before I go I have left just a tiny little bit of time to share a reading update of Little Women. So I was tasked with the uh, process of reading the first eight chapters of Little Women this weekend for my read along and I've done just that. Put my tea down so that I can chat to you but I'm now at the beginning of chapter nine so I've f finished the first eight chapters and I was just surprised when reading this. Obviously it's a reread but I feel like books like this you kind of remember the general gist but you don't always remember like the smaller details when thinking about your experience and I was just really struck by how much happens in the first eight chapters so in terms of pages in my copy chapter eight finishes on page 127 so that is only a small chunk of the overall book but it feels like so much has happened in terms of character setup and movement and some like iconic scenes and I think it's interesting because obviously the book I'm reading and it's in complete chronological logical order whereas the 2019 movie adaptation which I feel like is always in my mind when I'm reading the book I'm always like seeing those actors when I'm like imagining the scenes and that film is jumbled up like you have like scenes from the past and then it jumps forward and you're constantly muddling things up so scenes um, not to give any spoilers but things like when Joe and Laurie and Amy go ice skating and things like that happen a lot later in the film because it's sort of like a flashback whereas in the book it happens super early. I also want to say that given how emotional yesterday was the chapter which was chapter six and let me just check what it was called it was called Beth Finds the Palace Beautiful was just such an emotional chapter Beth I feel like is a character that nobody can dislike and that runs true both as a reader and then all the characters that she interacts with in the book because she is just so lovely and wholesome and seeing her find this like camaraderie with old Mr Lawrence is just so heartwarming and reading that chapter was just genuinely like enough to tip me over the edge given that I was already in in a weekend emotional state yesterday but I've had such a wonderful time reading the first eight chapters and I absolutely cannot wait to continue the rest next week I think let me just check my schedule because I know I'm reading about 13 chapters but I don't know exactly where that leaves me so Little Women week two gives me between chapters nine and chapter 21 which is what I'll be tackling as of tomorrow so Monday but for now I think I might sort of um, task myself with finding another festive book on my shelves I did buy one in a charity shop a few weeks ago and I think that might be downstairs so I'll probably start that one later on when I get back but for now I'm heading out the door let's go to a box and run class and see what the hell that entails and I'll catch up with you later to show you the beautiful scenes of snow that we have here from the box and run class which was actually so much fun I really really enjoyed it and we're definitely definitely gonna do it again as predicted I definitely found the run intervals a lot easier well easier is probably not the right word because it was very very hard but I found that easier to like wrap my head around whereas the boxing did feel very very new to me and I felt like it was so hard to keep my hands in like the gloves for so long because I just have not done that ever really before but lots of fun and like a great challenge and a fun way to start a Sunday. We also obviously made a little trip to Starbucks just for a quick vanilla latte after all the hard work that we'd done but now that I'm home I thought it was finally time to open my tea advent calendar although I'm actually not going to be drinking this right now because me and Jay are going out to a Victorian Christmas market that is just in the town that we live in so I don't know what it's going to be like. I feel like markets can often be a little bit underwhelming, but since it's literally just in walking distance, we figured we'd go and have a little look at it, maybe get something for lunch and then come back and have a nice cup of tea to warm up. So I thought I would see what tea I'm going to be having. So without further ado, we have number three, which if I consult the back of my board is... Santa's milk and cookies. Oh, that sounds really nice, actually. Perfect with or without milk, and even as a latte, a tea latte, I'm guessing. So this one has in it 
black tea, sumac berries, cornflower, safflower, red plum petals and natural flavours. Now milk and cookies sounds delicious and I'll definitely be making this one as a milky cup of tea. I might even treat myself and put a sugar in just throw caution to the wind. And on the subject of sweet and sugar I've decided on my next book for this reading situation and that is Jenny Colgan's Christmas at Rosie Hopkins' Sweet Shop. Now Jenny Colgan just writes the most wonderful festive books so I'm very excited to dig into this one and I'll be starting that one later on today. Do have kind of a busy afternoon so I'm probably going to come home, drink my tea and then start editing this vlogmas so I think this book may have to wait until later on this evening when I've done all of my job but for now we're going to a Victorian Christmas market to see what on earth that's all about. <laughs> the first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds. Not sure I'd say I was disappointed by the Christmas market because I did ultimately go in with quite low expectations, but it was not very good. I feel like I always find markets to just seem like such a great idea, but in reality, they're never that very, like, they're never that good. So we went, I did come away with one thing, which was a cinnamon roll. It was fairly expensive, so I'm hoping it's going to be delicious, but it is a vegan vanilla cinnamon roll. So I'm going to have that along with some lunch. I didn't actually have time for breakfast this morning because of the class, so I'm running on two coffees and no food. So I'm about to make myself a mega lunch to refuel. And of course, it wouldn't be lunch without a hot drink, so I have brewed my Santa's milk and cookies tea. And it smells like toffee popcorn to me which i feel like is a delicious smell so i'm just gonna pop in a little bit of oat milk and we will give it a try first of all we must stir okay do you know what i actually said i was gonna add some sugar into this one so i will but i feel like it's the sort of tea flavor that would ultimately be like enhanced by like been like half a sugar okay right without further ado tea number three it smells absolutely delicious that is just like such i probably i'm gonna say it's so sweet because it's got sugar in and i don't usually take sugar in my tea but it is just like such a cozy vibe I don't think this was a Roy Boss tea. Let me just double check the ingredients. I think it was a black tea. Yeah, it was a black tea, but I'm thinking that the combination of black tea with some of the flowers that were in there is giving it that like warming, aniseedy flavor that you get from Roy Boss tea, but I really like that. Mm delicious, really, really good. So far, so good with the Yawn Advent calendar. We've obviously had uh, pancake stack, toffee apple, and now milk and cookies, and all three flavours have been so delicious. And my main requirement for a tea advent calendar is that I love it when they give me flavours and combinations that I just wouldn't otherwise have. I like things that are like different than just ordinary everyday tea, so so far it is definitely ticking those boxes. And I'm really enjoying it. Now with that said, I started out the vlog with opening the advent calendar and I think I'm going to finish off the first episode of Vlogmas with the advent calendar as well because I now need to edit this video and get it up this evening. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed all of the trees, kittens and snow that Vlogmas has brought so far and I will of course catch up with you very soon for the next episode of Vlogmas.